isn't a review like last time. Today, I hit uh, the 20,000 mile mark on my R1200 GS, it's a 2017, and I thought it would be a good time to talk about my experience with this bike. This isn't a review, like last time, um, it was what I didn't know then, and today is, is what I do know. If you've watched my previous video about what I didn't know, there were a lot of things I didn't know, and since then I've been able to apply that. Okay, I gotta stop myself right there before I get in too far into this love fest for this bike. Do I love this bike? Yes. But let's be honest, no bike is perfect and this bike is no exception. And if you think your bike is perfect, great, but that's not reality. There's always a few things that we would like to change about our bikes. So, in as part of this, and yes it is turning out to be a little bit of a review, um, I wanted to go over a couple of the things <clears throat> that, I, uh, that irritate me before we get on to the love fest for the all R1200 GS rally. So the first thing that irritates me is getting into the air cleaner. You have to take off this plastic molding. I'm not going to do it. You can do searches to see how to do it. It's a pain in the butt. The plastic goes up and over the tank. You have to kind of peel all that away to get the cover. Um, that's a pain in the butt. The other thing I don't like is that I can't reset the service reminder um, on the mileage or on the year. I either have to buy a GS911 that is an external thing for three, four, five hundred dollars depending on where you look or I have to take it into the dealership. That irritates me. I can reset the service reminders on my cars but I can't do it on my bike. I don't understand that. Because I have a F800 GS now and it's the same thing with that, I will likely invest in a GS911 so that I can start resetting those. The other thing that irritates me about this bike is the back pressure valve on the exhaust manifold screeches when it's cold and I will demonstrate that for you right now. So that drives me mad. I've had it in for warranty. The header has been replaced completely uh, because the valve itself, the butterfly valve in there, is uh, welded into the manifold. And then I've also, I took it back in because it was still screeching and the servo motor was changed and it's still screeching. I think the long-term solution will be to go to an aftermarket exhaust that doesn't have the back pressure valve and then I eliminate those issues there. I mentioned it before in the uh, one year on the bike, the suspension off-road, I wish I could change it to the, the dynamic settings. I'd like something a little, a little stiffer, a little bit faster rebound. Now, with that being said, more recently I started uh, playing with the height settings and I've been riding it in the max height as opposed to the automatic. I don't know where that sets the sag, I'm guessing somewhere between 20 and 25% where the automatic is looking at 35%. It feels more responsive, the compression dampening feels a little bit more um, dampened and the rebound feels a little bit faster. What I noticed today where I'm riding down, down some of these roads, or riding across some of these more rough roads, is that it's snapping back a little bit more than uh, maybe I would like, and I can feel it hitting the extension stops in that max height. So I'm gonna go back and forth with that. I'd really like to have a high speed and low speed compression dampening adjustment, and then a rebound as well. That's down the road. Aftermarket suspensions are quite expensive for these bikes. On the, the rally bike, it's running the GSA suspension, so it's taller and it's a slightly uh, stiffer spring in the front and rear. And since it's more like on the adventure chassis, I don't understand why they didn't put the brake extension lever on the rear brake. I prefer that. I've ridden by the bike with that. And because of that, I've had to go and get a brake enlarger. When I'm standing on this bike, I feel like I have to drive the brake lever into the ground in order to get it to start slowing me down from the rear. I use the front brake a lot, so that's not an issue, but sometimes, depending on the terrain, I can't use the front brake as much, um, and I want to just use a little bit of the back brake. But when I do that, I really have to drive it down. So I've already put an alt rider 
brake lever larger with the extension and I can tell you it made a huge difference. I can find the brake lever really, really fast. And the extension isn't that hard to get to. A little bit of pigeon toe and, and I can push it down and find it pretty easily standing up. So it, it would have been nice if they just would have added the extension that they put on the Adventure since this is like a, an Adventure light without the big tank and all of the uh, protection. But BMW didn't do that, so I had to do that myself. What I know now is that these bikes, these big bikes, are really easy to do a lot of long distance travel. It's not hard to do three or 400 miles in a day and do that day after day. It is incredibly easy, which has made me want to travel more and more and more because of how easy it is to get places, and you get places quickly. One of the things I really like is the ride modes on this bike. I've used the rain mode a lot. In hail, and a lot of rain, we even used it on icy roads. I like the enduro mode because I can get off road, back wheel gets to spin some. I, it adds a level of comfort and security to me. I like being able to switch in and out of road mode and dynamic so that when I'm just doing a lot of interstate miles, I'm in the road, the suspension feels softer and more plush. If I'm doing a lot of twisties, I flip it to dynamic and then it stiffens the suspension up and then I have more throttle control. I like the ride modes. That's one of the reasons why I purchased this bike. The other thing about this bike is how easy it is to ride off-road. I don't do crazy off-road, I don't do mud, I don't do a lot of sand, but I do a little bit. If you've followed any of my videos, you see some of the terrain that I do ride through. I'm not trying to do expert level terrain, but for as big and as heavy as this bike is, it is incredibly capable. I'm not a skilled rider, but it's still, I'm able to get through things on this bike that I just surprises me sometimes of, of how easy it is and that it wasn't as much work as I expected, whether it be going through rocky sections, some sand, um, not a lot of mud. Definitely the forest roads, some of the Jeep trails, when they get rough, it's still not hard to ride. And it's an incredibly capable bike. I will never take this bike to its limits. I don't have that skill level to do that. And what little skill that I do have is enough to allow me to get to great places like this. So I cannot say enough about the capability of this bike. Now I know a lot of the big adventure bikes have a lot of capability. You can do a lot of things with those. I haven't ridden those. My experience has been on this. After riding the F700 and now I have an F800, going between the F800 and the R1200, it's, this bike is easier to ride off-road than, than the 800 with the balance, um, the suspension, just the overall feel of it. And I, it's more, I have more confidence riding in rough terrain on this bike than I do the 800. So it, you wouldn't expect that out of a heavier bike and a bigger bike, but that's, that is clearly um, the way it is. One of the things I really like about this bike is the volume of aftermarket parts. I like to make things my own, I like to change them, I like to modify them to fit my, my needs, my style of riding, my style of travel, and there are so many things out there that you can do with these bikes to make it your own, which is really, really fantastic. Um, the one thing that I didn't expect is just how frequently I'm changing tires. I get about 4,500 miles um, on a rear tire, which um, I don't know, I don't know what everybody else gets, I'm just changing tires a lot more on this bike than I do my other which is fine, that means I'm riding, I don't mind that. And there's a lot of tire variety and tires for these bikes are expensive. And one of the things I do wanna talk about uh, in regards to tires is I've tried a variety of different tires over the last year and you can see some of the reviews I've done. Um, I have now came to the conclusion that for the type of riding that I do, even though it only borders like 20% off-road, I'm gonna be riding a full knobby from this point forward. Um, unless I'm planning to ride across the country on roads, for all the riding that I do in the southwest, I'm just gonna use a full knobby. I want the most traction where I'm gonna need it the most, which is off-road. I don't ride fast. If I wear tires down in 4,000, 4,500 miles, that's fine, I'll just switch them. I want the traction off-road. So the one thing that I know now is what my tire selection will be from this point forward. What can I say about this bike? I mean, man, it's, uh, it's a fantastic bike. I haven't had any problems with it. There's a reason why you see these bikes everywhere, whether it be off-road, on-road, long distance travel. They get the job done, and they get it done comfortably. If I had to choose 
doing a long distance road trip in a car or my motorcycle, I would choose my motorcycle every single time. I would take all the weather elements over being stuck in a car for hours on end. The experience of being on the bike is beyond anything I ever could have imagined. The interactions that I have with people, the discussions, the frequency that people just want to come up and talk to me, I didn't expect that. That has just been a, a treat to have that uh, when, when I'm traveling. So these are just kind of my thoughts on the bike at the 20,000 mile mark. It's not, um, it's not a review, it's just uh, what I've learned from riding the bike over the past two years. So hopefully um, if you've had experiences like that, leave, leave me some comments. I'm kind of curious to see what other people's thoughts on this bike are. I know not everyone likes the GS and that's fine. Um, you're entitled to your opinion. But for those of us that ride these bikes, we tend to like them a lot. So thanks for watching and I will see you out there.